Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. And today it's going to be an interesting video because today is a very, very extremely serious topic. It's not going to be the high energy and uh, charismatic, uh, highbrow type of activity that I normally want to talk about. Today we're going to talk about investigations. <clears throat> because Honestly, today is one of the longest days I've ever had in my entire career. And I'm in the end, I'm going to tell you like the resolution of what happened. But let's try and go through the story and tell you as much as I possibly can. Now, I told you guys that I had a freezer that caught fire. And it had roughly about $200,000 worth of stuff that was human tissue that is expired. I'm only gonna tell you my side of the story uh, because as far as the OR staff and their obligations and whatnot, that doesn't even matter. I mean, that's between them. But as a biomed, I want you guys to be prepared for this kind of scenario because this is as lighthearted as a scenario gets. This is a loss of $200,000 worth of stuff, plus or minus. Um, I think any hospital would take that in an instant over the loss of a patient. And I have either heard of those type of situations or I have been at the tail end of those type of investigations before. And I would take this one over that any day. But today was probably one of the most stressful days of my entire career. And that's saying a lot. I, like I said, I've been a biomed during a war. I've been there helping people uh, hold down patients like to uh, cut off legs and stuff. Um, I've, I've been through a lot, man. Uh, but uh, today today was honestly one of the worst. So let's start out right from the beginning. Uh, without saying any names or any specifics, I can tell you that I got to work first thing this morning. Now, I made the video yesterday that said I'm going to go into work and have as high energy of a morning as possible. Because... I knew that things could get intense because anytime that there's a possible fault, whatnot, um, I knew that it was eventually going to come back to me. And that's the thing that you have to accept when you're in charge of something or when you take on responsibility is that it comes back to you. It doesn't matter what anybody else did, you're going to have to answer for things, whether or not it's your fault. You just at least be prepared mentally to answer questions and it's a good thing that I was at least prepped um, and in some ways sometimes I, I talk about things with my associates my my teammates and what that does is it it bounces ideas off them and it allows you to develop your argument okay so by you explaining your story to your associates it helps you practice for when you're going to be asked by more serious parties because you don't want to be formulating um, chronological order of events in your head when you're in front of a bunch of people you want to have that already cemented in your memory if not have have a notebook with it written down as soon as an event happens start start recording uh, the sequence of events start writing stuff down immediately and uh, anyway back to what happened today I got into work at 0 530 this morning and the first thing I do when I get to work every single day is I go through and I start reading the charge nurse reports which is uh, it's a document that basically gives the status of the operating room at shifts and intervals and that will also tell me like what type of cases happened, if there was any anomalies, any problems with equipment, etc. That is your charge nurse report. And it's, it's actually become an, a very incredible tool for me. Uh, so I read those reports and it helps me formulate uh, my responses. Because if I have a problem with equipment throughout the night or over the weekend, they're going to ask me, like, hey, what's going on with this? Have you ever seen this problem before? Qu 
questions like that. So by reading those reports and staying constantly updated, it has greatly helped me out in this career field. So when I was reading the charge nurse reports at, I don't know, it was probably around 7.30 this morning, I was asked by, let's, let's just say the third down in my hospital, it's like vice president, president, uh, president, vice president, and then this person, okay? This person asked me uh, to bring the power cord to the freezer and the battery down to their office. And I, I said, absolutely, no problem. I, this person offered to come to my office and pick them up, but you don't ever uh, have an executive at your hospital come to your office to pick something up. You take it to them. So I took my notepad with me, my phone, my an ink pen, the battery, and the power cord, and I took this down to this person. And that person wanted to know my opinion of what happened. Because first thing this morning when I got to work, I read an email that said tomorrow, Friday, there's going to be an independent reviewer, an engineer, is going to come from off-site and going to do a full engineering level investigation as to what happened to this freezer. Mind you, there's over $200,000 worth of losses. The insurance company wants to know what happened. The hospital executive staff wants to know what happened. And in the end, everybody wants a process improvement. That's basically it. They're, they're not really trying to hang anybody, although, trust me, that we'll get to that. <clears throat> so I went to this person's office, and I showed them the cord, and I showed the battery, and I, I told them exactly what I think happened. Halfway down uh, the power supply in the back of the, fr the freezer, the power cord plugs into an IEC receptacle. An IEC receptacle is the receptacle that's got the, the pins and you got the female plug that plugs onto those pins. It's a very common uh, receptacle on the back of all medical devices. It's called an IEC power input or power inlet. And then you have an IEC female connector which is on the back of the power cord. So that plugs into the receptacle. And anyway, what happened is the freezer gets pushed back into the wall in the sterile core and there's evidence because it was a straight power cord that had a very drastic bend right after um, right after the IEC female end so the power cord was bent at a very sharp angle and you could see some damage on the back of the cord where it had smashed the wall well, what that does if you guys remember, in other videos I've told you that soft objects like cords will get damaged most often when they meet a hard object like the cord plug-in, the IEC female plug-in. That's where the damage almost always happens, where the soft meets the hard. And um, in my opinion, that's what happened. I've seen this type of, of damage on surgical tables when you have... Uh, anesthesiologists they'll roll their chair up or they'll kick the power cord that goes into a surgical table and they'll kick it so it'll start arcing because it widens those pins a little bit you can imagine like the pin fits into the the female section and what it does is it slowly uh, widens the gap a little bit and this is an ultra low freezer so it draws a, a huge amount of current so when you loosen up that connection it, it barely has any connection in there whatsoever so when you do a high current draw like the freezer compressor it creates hot spots and hot spots create arcs arcs create melting melting creates fires and that's the process so that's why we change power cords on medical equipment because hot spots create arcs arcs create melting melting creates fire all right that's the process and I've seen it on surgical tables before and um, this is exactly in my opinion what happened so um, anyway 
I all day today I've been through meetings. I have had to write two or three engineering level responses, which is in technical terminology exactly what happened with photo uh, evidence of that instance. And uh, it got to be about lunchtime, and after lunchtime, I had um, I just finished my lunch. And I, I got this call to say, hey, Justin, you doing anything at the moment? I said, no, not at the moment. Uh, why don't you come on down? We got a Zoom meeting. I guess they didn't invite you to. Come on down. So I get down there, and I take a uh, Pelican case, and I sit it over next to uh, this coordinator. And on the computer screen is 9 to 12 um, executive level people of our hospital. And they're all sitting there staring at me. And the coordinator says, yeah, Justin, so uh, what all happened? And there was the firing squad. So this is what you have to prepare for mentally, is this type of situation can and will happen. It will happen. And it's not one of those things where, hey, uh, I'm not going to answer that. I'm going to go get a lawyer. No, no. These people are there. They're all looking at you, and they want answers. And they want answers right now. And I was ready for it. I was like, shoot, go ahead. Because I sat down with my team and over the course of the last day or two, um, like I, I've had my teammates like ask me questions about what happened here, what happened there. And I was answering their questions, you know, to the best of my ability. And if there's something I didn't know, I was definitely gonna do a little bit more research because if they're asking me this question, then the execs are gonna ask me this question. And uh that's exactly what happened. I sat there for 30 minutes or so and they were asking me different types of questions about the PM process, um, when was its last service, you know, stuff like uh, how long do I think it's going to alarm for once it goes on battery, you know, is the battery maintained or is it just always depleting? It's, it's a whole bunch of questions and you just kind of have to be prepared for whatever's going to come next. And these are all reasonable questions. They're not necessarily there to, to hang me. But certainly, if you're, you're sitting there before the entire executives, uh, the entire board of executives, and you look like a jerk off, uh, like you don't know what you're talking about. Like I said in other videos, image is everything. So I'm not, I'm not feeding them a line of baloney. I practiced. I practiced with my teammates. Like, because this, I know what was going to happen is that people are going to start asking me questions and I would, you know, I can kind of perceive the, the type of stuff that's reasonable, but what about unreasonable stuff? Because those questions are going to happen too. And um, I was luckily uh, ready for everything that they threw at me. And after that, uh, the OR director, who I have very good uh, relationship with, um, this person came right to my office and, and wanted to continue uh, like, hey, what about this? What about that? Hey, uh, can you go up there and test this? So what I, I ended up doing is I, I told them that this freezer, I can't guarantee that the alarm went off, all right, because I wasn't there. We found out about this problem five days after it happened. At that point, the battery was at 7.5 volts. And I'll tell you guys one thing right away. If batteries fail, like lead acid batteries, they usually deplete almost to zero volts. They almost never sit at two thirds their voltage level. That is a sign of a depleted battery, not a bad battery, okay? So if I found this five days later, so what happens is in a freezer you have a circuit board that has a CPU on it or a comparator circuit and you have certain values which are your alarm limits that it's looking for and it's also got one or two temperature probes and it's constantly reading those values so when you lose power to the the freezer it starts running off battery immediately and it's constantly monitoring those temperatures and when it falls out of range it alarms it's it's like an independent circuit the only thing that's not independent is that it maintains the battery like it's charged from the power supply. So, you know, besides the charge, this circuit runs completely off the battery and that's your alarm circuit. But 
it does have a processor, it does have an alarm speaker, and it is still powering those uh, temperature uh, transducers or the, those uh, temperature probes. So it's, it's draining the battery, and who knows how long it was draining this battery. But I told him there is one way to test it for sure. I have the exact same type of battery. Let's take it up there, let's hook it up to this freezer, and we'll do it on a live, sh live stream video. And if it starts alarming, because obviously it's at room temperature, it's not within its range. If it starts alarming immediately, then we know that it was alarming uh, over the weekend and it just wasn't paid attention to. So I had three, four, five people that went with us up there and I took the panel off. I hooked up some jumpers to the spade connectors that was for the battery circuit connected the other jumpers to uh, this battery that I brought up there and you could hear a miniature little relay click over and it started alarming. The, the display came up that it was out of limits and it started alarming and there you go that's it so the freezer was alarming and you know somebody didn't pay attention to it or whatever the situation was and the, it just depleted the battery to 7.5 volts which is how it was when I found it so guys this is just one of those things um, inspections are one thing but investigations are a whole different matter document your work my god please write things in your work order more than PM complete oh gosh when I see PM complete in work orders I just shivers go down my spine because guys, that is not a good answer. PM complete. What did you do? I checked the alarms. I changed the battery. You know, I cleaned the unit. What did you do? So please write stuff in your work orders. And that is ended up what saved me. Is in my work order. I actually had written on this particular freezer that a month and a half, two months ago, I had two work orders for this unit. And one of the work orders I stated that customers complained the filter was dirty because it's in the sterile core so I was responding to a customers complaint that it was dirty I cleaned the filter I cleaned the filter housing and the um, evapor or the condenser coils that are right behind the filter and I also checked the temperature with a thermocouple probe in the in the chambers because if you're filters dirty you might not be reaching your low temperature so I also had the temperatures listed in the work order and it saved me it saved me because I didn't list it as a PM I list it as a cleaning as a special request so guys there you have it uh, that was my day extremely stressful and uh, I got through it but uh, document your work orders please document correctly and um, when invest investigations happen, because they will if you're in this game long enough, please go through and and don't shoot off at the mall. If anything, tell people you'll get back to them later. But make sure that you are thorough, because when they start asking you questions, make sure that you know what you're going to say and don't, don't guess, okay? So that's all I'm going to say. Guys, have a good day. I hope your day was better than mine. <laughs> See ya.